She is a nutrition coach, nutritional coach. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she's going to talk to us about the importance of a nutritional lifestyle, which is like, to me, should be at the very top of our priority list. Welcome. Hi, Dominic. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. I mean, I, I really feel uh, like this is a great conversation because I get inspired by people like you that share this knowledge. And, um, you know, I'm, I, I said earlier, like I'm back on the wagon and it feels so good. So when people say, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing great. <laughs> <laughs> and I really mean it. Yeah, that's a wonderful so, thing. And um, you're, you're there in the Northern Highlands. How are you doing? I'm good, actually. Been a lovely day today. Went for a walk uh, about an hour ago, so ago. I went into the to the woods for about half an hour. Little, little lovely walk around. It's like a circular route, and uh, just looking at the the daffodils, which aren't out just yet, but all the little snowdrops as well. Mm -hmm. Lovely. It was really nice. Just to just to go out for just even half an hour, just in the fresh air and sun was shining and just yeah, just to being a, amongst nature as well. It was lovely. Yeah, so quite my my husband as well. So just both of us. It was really nice. He had a, he got a day off today, so which was great. Yeah, yeah. terrific. And spring is around the corner. I think we've got what here in Chicago we have about two months left. Right, right. I just just saw all that with the daffodils sort of popping up today, and I was thinking, yay! Spring is in the air. It's not too far away. Yeah. Well, <laughs> That's <laughs> well, my wife said to me yesterday, we were talking about, you know, that today is going to be 47 Fahrenheit today. And wow. uh, a lot of the snow has melted. And she said, well, I even just read that mostly we get uh, the, the we get the most snow in March. And I'm just like, OK, <laughs> here we go again on oh, the roller coaster. Oh, so, my goodness. Yeah. Well, we've had a downfall of snow just a few weeks ago. Um, it lasted about a few a few days and then it just melted and then it just disappeared now. So yeah, um, we have been known to get snow in April and May, um, but hopefully we won't get any more now. That so uh, we're actually on on an upward spiral now. So yeah, I mean where you're at is like you're almost in a, on the North Pole with Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah, we're on the same um, sort of um, latitude uh, or longitude. I was getting mixed up as um, Norway. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so it wow. does get cold and wild sometimes, yeah. but it, it is lovely. I mean, it's pretty, pretty remote where I am. The I can't remember what the population is, but it, it is lovely. But, uh, you know, and because we're not overpopulated as well and we haven't got a lot of pollution. Well, there's pollution everywhere, but not as much as, you know, it's if you were in, living in a big city. Um, so, sure. yeah, it's, it's stunning. Yeah. Food for the soul. That's great. So this show is called Why It's Important. And so, yeah, that's the like the title on there. If you're watching or you're, you know, probably if you're listening, you can't see it. But it says the importance of a nutritional lifestyle because it is important. It's like that orange juice you're drinking right there. Yeah. It's important to, I, you know, I mean, just we all know this. And yet somehow you know we come home from the supermarket and then there's things that we purchased that are not you know we know they're not the right thing to do but they taste good <laughs> <laughs> they've got the science worked out in these laboratories and some of these companies where they test and test and test and test so that it's the perfect you know yeah it's crazy so so talk to us about this whole thing about the nutritional lifestyle and tell us a little bit, give us your, you know, 30 second, you know, who are, who's Jane Moore? Okay. So I started this journey uh, a few years back because of, um, I had severe uh, health, chronic health problems. So I dealt with the fiber, I had fibromyalgia. I had uh, my gallbladder taken out um, back in 2004, I believe, I think it was. 2004 and then I ended up with thyroid disease with it was um, something called Simon thyroiditis where you th my thyroid gland um, I can go from one extreme to the next so I can like lose a ton of weight um, and then I can put like a load of weight on 
you know, from like within weeks. So it just swinging back and forth like a pendulum. Um, the, the lowest weight I was just was just over two years ago. I hit six stone four. Six double four. Four, yeah. 604 kilos. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that translates to. Yeah. yeah. So we got this 14 pounds uh, in, in a stone. So times that. So it's not very much. Not very much. Light is a fair there. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that was that was quite a big struggle for me, that, because of no matter how much food I was eating, I was still losing the weight. And uh, my family was getting really, really worried about me. Um, and I was saying, look, I'm eating every, every every hour to every half an hour, you know, eating constantly. Mm -hmm. They're like, well, what else do you do? And I was like, I'm doing everything I, I can, you know, because obviously... I was dealing with a lot of pathogens and viruses. Um, and if you're dealing with a lot of pathogens and viruses, Dominic, and toxins in your body, your your body can't cope. So I was having almost like a viral flare. Um, so if I sort of take it back a little bit. So going back, uh, it would be about 12 years ago, as I've said, Talk to you about the panic attack when they first really started was I was um, at home in bed one night and uh, I felt a bit I felt really really I came over really really strange and uh, I laid there for a while and I thought oh gosh I, don't, I really don't feel very well so I quickly sort of stood up and then the whole room completely went went round and my heart was just bub, 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 out of my chest I was like wow Oh, God. It, was I, it was so frightening because I thought I'm, nobody was about neither. My husband was working nights, and um, it was I think it was about two o'clock in the morning. I thought, oh my gosh, there's nobody I could ring, you know, because I thought I'd end up waking them up and giving them a, a fright. So I ended up having to ring um, my husband's work and said, look, I'm not feeling very well, and um, can you get my husband? And um, they said, oh, what's wrong? I said. I don't know about. It. They said I'll I'll just explain what I'm some of the symptoms I'm having, and they were like, "Oh my god!" They said, "Right, we're gonna get we'll get you an ambulance." So, within about five minutes, the ambulance had turned up. But prior to, just before they turned up, they said, "Can you take some aspirin? Get two aspirins down here yeah, because of, um, you know, if there's anything going on that's we need to deal right. quickly get the aspirin down you." So I did that. And then um, they took me off to the hospital and uh, they all hooked me up into the ECG and everything. And then they put me onto the high dependency ward. And uh, there was only like, I think there was about two, two or three beds in this particular room. And they had, uh, and then they monitored me all night long. They had me all hooked up and everything. And uh, I mean, that was scary for me because I, I mean, I couldn't really settle through the night or anything because you know, the heart, heart was still racing, mm -hmm. especially in that monitor going beep, beep, you know, you know, when they have you hooked up to that and you're like hearing it next to the side of you like, oh, gee whiz. Um, and then the next day, the, the, the consultant came and uh, he said, oh, well, I obviously know there's there's heart problems in your family. And uh, he said, well, basically, Jane, he said, what happened to you was you had one massive panic attack. And I was like, what the heck? what's what's that? What's that caused from? And he said, it could be numerous things. And uh, anyway, they sent me on my way and uh, gave me some beta blockers. And so sort of that was it for, for a while. And then I was obviously going back and forth to the doctor with um, one thing after another. And then obviously still the anxiety was still continuing. And that just started getting worse. So then it uh, made me wonder, I thought, what am I actually doing? Is this something I'm actually doing that I could be contributing to to all what's going on? Mm -hmm. So then it started me thinking, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to start doing some small tweaks with my diet just to see, see, you know, how I respond. So I started cutting out um, sort, of the, sort of, you know, have all the dairy, the yogurt and all the other stuff. So I started cutting out the yogurt and to see if, if that would benefit me in any way. And I did that for a 
few weeks and then I sort of started cutting down on the milk and yeah I noticed that some small changes um and then I thought you know what um I don't think this is working after a while I thought I still don't feel very well I'm still having the weight fluctuations and everything mm-hmm. still having the anxiety so I started looking into the nutritional side of things and I came across um, this gentleman called Anthony Williams, a medical medium. So I started doing research on him and um, started looking into all the information that he had. And it completely resonated with me. So I bought all his books, started studying the books, and, uh, and I actually found out what the true cause of what my anxiety was. And it was a complete revelation to me. It was like, why on earth could the doctors and nurses not tell me all this information? But sadly, the fact is, pharmaceutical industries are so behind the times and so are the doctors and consultants with their information. And uh, so I went on to start studying the material and what I found out was that I was dealing with a lo- an overload of um, viruses which was the Epstein-Barr virus um, which when you've got that in your system you've also got streptococcus as well which I was dealing with and uh, and then if you've got a a problem with your liver as well if that's you know either sluggish pre-fatty or fatty that starts slowing your system down so then if you've got an overload of toxins in your system and you've got an overload of um, pharmaceuticals in your systems like antibiotics as well when that's all there that's a complete uh, breeding ground for viruses and pathogens to um, thrive in Hmm. and then I was um, eating all the foods that were feeding these viruses and pathogens which was I was eating the eggs, the dairy, the gluten, um, processed foods. So I was doing all this prior to knowing all this knowledge that I've learned. So what I was had to do then was do a complete change around with my lifestyle and diet. And I ended up sort of it's not I suppose I did it really quickly actually because I was fed up of being sick fed up of going to the doctors all the time and I thought well if they can't they can't give me the answers so I thought I need to seek the answers myself and that's what I did Mm -hmm. from that point onwards so I trained also as a nutritional uh, coach as well so that enabled me quite a lot to, to learn different things, and even when I was at when I was at college as well, I learned we had to we had to do nutrition as well when I was doing psychology, and what I learned back then I was thinking, my goodness, this doesn't this is not really healthy food that you're eating, and you know like ha, you know have five fruit a day, well that's not enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> To have a huge variety of fresh fruits and vegetables every day so i started a you know the plant-based diet so that's what i do now is plant-based yeah so are you are you a vegetarian you are yeah um no i would say vegetarian i would say probably more vegan but plant-based veg- vegan yeah yeah you know it's interesting too you i mean you mentioned dairy and i um i don't drink dairy I do have some cheese, um, but dairy's not in my diet anymore. And I can tell a difference in the way that I feel. Yeah. Definitely. And I cringe sometimes seeing people come out of the supermarket, you know, with these big, you know, containers, gallons, jugs like this full of, of milk. And I'm thinking they just they just don't know. They don't know. It, the thing is, we need to re-educate people. That's the thing, Dominic. They don't know what they're actually consuming in their body because... You look at the TV today, 
we've had it for for donkey's years haven't we with you know the advertising of like have a pizza have you know have eggs or you know have bacon and all the other stuff as well so we, we you know it's subliminal messages all the time so it's i mean it's tragic that you know it, we've got that way in society that we're basically we've been brainwashed mm -hmm. it's true brainwashed yeah. in the wrong direction we need to brainwashed in the other direction yeah <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, in the bigger picture, in terms of nutrition, you know, I like thinking all thinking about it in terms of so so why it's important. Of course, to have a healthy body. Yeah. Of course, right. We all want to have a healthy body. The thing that I've learned and help me with this. So it's like the effects of something that you know that I put in my mouth that I eat it whether it tastes good or it's not good for me or whatever or even if it's something nutritional there's an effect and that effect is sometimes not noticeable and if people I maybe I didn't hear you say this exactly but if people are eating the wrong types of foods they have so many issues going on that they can't really distinguish between one thing or the other so there's no there's no fine tuning there. There isn't. So yeah, I mean, so now you've you you've got yourself to a point where you're clean. Your system is in balance and if you put something in that isn't quite right, you notice it, don't you? Oh gosh. Yeah, hugely. Yeah. It's yeah. Like when, when I went on holiday <clears throat> 2 years ago with my family and uh, they obviously knew I was, you know, plant-based diet and everything <clears throat> and the pressure that you have from just not just only family but friends too you know oh have a bit of this you know you'll be okay you'll be okay jane i'm like no i i can't honestly i said you don't understand that if you if you've been as sick as me then you you'd know if you you put yourself in my shoes mm -hmm. then you understand you know and it's like have a you know have a bit of cake and or have, you know oh, have a glass of wine you'll be okay but i'm like I can't honestly. I have to like be really strong. I'm like no. Yeah. Because otherwise, I know, I know it may, it it would make me feel absolutely horrendous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's not worth it. Yeah, and the 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 other part of the importance is having people around you that will support you in in what you need in terms of tradition. Because without that kind of support, and I mean, I've been, we've all been in that situation. I don't think that our family and friends are intentionally trying to, you know, no. No. you know what I mean? Th except that they, what they need to know is that, oh my gosh, like with my wife and myself, you know, we support each other in doing our exercise and eating healthy. And, yeah. you know, it, she'll point it out. Like, last weekend I was at my sister-in-law's house and she has their, they have a really nice bar down in their basement and everything is, you know, gorgeous and stuff. And so I'm sitting at the bar and of course there's a bowl of chocolates. <laughs> oh, 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 no. Temptation. Right so yeah, so I said it really loud. I said, who put these damn chocolates on <laughs> the countertop? That's evil. Yeah. <laughs> and my wife looked at me she said, remember, you're in charge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's, I mean, you know, so she, my sister-in-law, of course, put the chocolates out, but she didn't do it so that she could, you know, trip me up. It wasn't yeah. like that. Yeah. That people need to understand that it is important for us to support each other in yeah. being as healthy as we can be. But I mean, for gosh, obvious reasons, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not just that we feel bad in the short term or for like you did for, for a long time, my gosh, but for, you know, you know, we, we, I mean, I'm in my sixties now, early sixties, you're 50, you're in your early fifties. So it's now becoming much more of a priority yeah. than ever before. Oh gosh. Yeah. I mean, when you're young, like when I was in my twenties, early thirties, you think you're invincible. So, you know, you, you, you're drinking the wine, you're drinking the, the champagne and, you know, and you're having fun and everything else, but you hit your forties and then all of a sudden everything just goes completely <laughs> down now and you're just like, what the hell happened? Exactly. 
what the hell happened? And it's just, you know, when you when you when you've been affected like like I have with with my chronic health problems, it's just you think, oh my gosh, if you just think, how much more can I can I take? So you, I went through so much pain of you know being in the hospitals, spending a lot of time in bed. Um, you know, it got to the point where I just thought people must think I'm absolutely like a hypochondriac or something. Right. Because I was always at the doctors as well. And you know what, Dominic, I've not been to the doctors for three years. Wow. Congratulations. That's great. It's amazing. I'm dead proud of myself. <laughs> for three years. I and mean, I am really super proud of myself because to compared to where I was before, I was always at the I was always at the doctors. But now I know what I know now because I've educated myself as well. Um with you know, with with how you can heal your body. Your your body's an incredible machine uh to heal itself. So if you're putting in the right food um, and the proper nutrition, you, you can you can heal your body tremendously. Mm -hmm. um, because when you've got like, when you're dealing with anxiety, what what's happening is you've got an overload of neurotoxins in your body. So what that happens is um, if you're eating like a certain type of food, say for instance, eggs, um, what that does is feeding the virus. So then you got more of the, so you got the more of the toxin build up. So the virus basically, it's say it's pooping, it's getting rid of whatever it needs to, and then that's a neurotoxin. And then these neurotoxins, what happened is they actually burn out your neurotransmitters in your brain. So it's always like a light bulb going going off. Wow. Yeah. So you can imagine that going off so many times. It's almost like having an electrical storm in, in your, in your mm -hmm. brain. Mm -hmm. That all these bulbs are popping mm -hmm. constantly. And then because of the vagus nerve as well, you got inflammation of the vagus nerve. So that's where you're getting all the, you know, you, you get the symptoms of that horrible, like churning stomach, and then it feels like it's, woo, it's coming over you. And you feel like you, you don't know whether you want to run from yourself or freeze or, you know that flight of that fight fight or flight kicks in and you don't know what to do it's yeah pretty ter it's terrifying when when you do have them so severe and you don't know you know you're like oh my gosh what what's happening yeah. if you if you well i know that you're, you're a nutritional coach so you're coaching people educating them getting them back to this balance thing yeah it's like you know and it's from personal experience um so let's talk about um let's just talk about nutrition i mean we all know fruits and vegetables and you're plant-based so does that mean that you don't eat like like pasta for example um you that's plant-based it's what a semolina or whatever it is but that that's something that you would allow yourself to eat yeah it'd be gluten-free though yeah, gluten free. And that's a good topic right there. Let's talk about gluten because I'm confused about that. I don't quite understand because I see this gluten free things on the labels there. And what what is the point point of that? Something about the kernel or something? No, a gluten. It's almost like a sticking agent. You know, a bit like glue. It is a bit like glue actually. So you know, bouncing us in bread. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what gluten is. It's so you get the the, the bouncing us in it in bread. So it's like it's almost like. It's almost like a sticking agent, shall we say? Um, but I, I've noticed this as well, John. This is where people need to be very, very wary of buying products that says gluten free. That's okay, but you've got to look at the what the the small um, label and what she what is in it. Yeah, why? So say gluten free, but it's all the other stuff. It's all the other stuff that's in it. That's really bad toxins. Yeah, like nutritional yeast. That's okay. that, that's a no no. Um, you got citric acid. That's a no no. Uh, you got um, rapeseed oil. Again, that's a no no. So you got um, palm oil. Again, that's a toxin. That's a no no. So there's a lot of this. I could go on <laughs> all day. There's a lot of different things that are really really toxic to the body 
which will cause a lot of inflammation and then a breakdown and then that's when disease starts kicking in mm -hmm. so when you work with someone what's like the first thing is just to ask them lots of questions about so where are you at so you can figure out what's going on and then yeah. begin to do like like i went to see a functional medicine doctor several months ago like i told you and it was like elimination diet yeah yeah so basically what i would do with, with the person is find out what they're dealing with that's the first thing um i would find out you know what to because a lot of people are carrying the epstein-barr virus around and they don't even know that they're carrying it around uh, a lot of people um even if you've got one symptom you've actually got the epstein-barr virus or streptococcus um so that's the first thing i do is find out what the problem is then we would set a structured plan so they start doing things slowly um and then increasing it of elimination of these products mm -hmm. that i talk about yeah so to sort of just re reverse the whole process so yeah. that instead yeah. of adding toxins you're adding nutrition yeah 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 so you're basically making sure that they're you know for me this is this is my like protocol so i so sort of do lemon water in the morning so you you cleansing your you you basically cleansing your body constantly to get to get rid of all these toxins because we got you can have years and years of buildup of toxins and when the liver becomes so overburdened it's almost like like a say like a bucket of water a pail of water and it, you've filled it up and filled it up and then it's just going and it, it's got to push it somewhere but it can't push it out too quickly out of your body or the toxins from your liver because mm -hmm. it would cause an overload and you end up dying so the liver's got to soak up so much of it but when it gets so so overburdened it can't cope and this is when people start having problems with their their um symptoms because even if you get one symptom it's your liver your liver's got a problem and yeah that needs to be it. The, what are what are some of the symptoms that you've seen I mean, you mentioned several from you, but from other people? Um, the fibromyalgia, migraines, you know, like you've got diabetes, um, MS, multiple sclerosis. The, the list goes on. The mm -hmm. list goes on. Yeah. So, yeah. What about obvious ones? Like, I don't know, like skin issues or, um, like I mean. Like acne is one, oh. that's a common one. Um, especially for the younger generation, well, the older generation can get acne, skin acne. Again, that's streptococcus, mm -hmm. the bacteria that uh, people are dealing with. Um, I, I mean, I had a skin condition called kerato keratosis, and uh, that's almost like a form of eczema on the top of my top of my thighs. Um, and again, that's streptococcus as well. That that I've been dealing with from a very young age. That started on my legs about probably when I was 10 years of age. Mm. And I thought, what is this? Because I used to get like a bit embarrassed because the girls, you know, the kids would say, you know, if you are doing PE, they're like, oh, what's that? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know what it was. You, you, you're just feeling awkward and weird and not knowing. But I mean, the other thing that's interesting is for, so that's a great example. So then, you know, we see other people eating all the same things we're eating and then some people don't seem to get affected. I know. So and again, that's that's that, that's down to as well um the environment you've lived in, um your lifestyle, um how you've been brought up, um how many uh toxins you've been dealing with. Everybody's toxin toxin load is all different. So it depends what you put in your body, depends how many antibiotics you've had over the years, because antibiotics actually feed viruses as well. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, well, I've got one more, one more question. I'm sorry. Finish up. I am saying that, that, you know, antibiotics can be good for the short term, you know, in an emergency, but for the long term, they are not good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last question. What, what are, these people do these things like uh cleanses so i've done 
like a liver cleanse or a gallbladder cleanse or, you know, these different things, right? So yeah. is this something that you include or have people do depending on how, what's the word, clogged up or whatever? <laughs> yes, that, that's what they need to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. start doing a liver cleanse. Yeah, right. Safely as well, because there's a right way and a wrong way to do liver cleanses. Yeah, that's a whole another topic. I mean, yeah. this whole nutrition thing is so enormous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, I think that you know, people need to begin to recognize the the symptoms because the what I've always heard help me to, with this is this when when you start seeing a symptom, then you're you're already in the body's in damage control. It's it's yeah. not like it's too late; you can reverse it. But if you don't take action, if you don't do something different. It's just going to continue, and it, then it, it doesn't show. You know, it shows up here, and then it shows up there, and then it shows over here, and then, you know, and everybody's like, uh, like you were going through your chronic illnesses, and people just think, well, you know, food combining is another topic. Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of things, there but the, the symptoms. What? Why is it important to recognize symptoms and and then take action? Because if you, you know, even if you're just dealing with one symptom, you, you really need to get it addressed straight away. And it's, it's got to be your diet. That's the first and foremost that you take action, because if you don't, then it's that then that one symptom will become two and then three. And then before you know it, you're dealing with an absolute shed load of of um, symptoms with all sorts of different things as well. You end up going to the doctors as well. But, you know, you really need, people need to take personal responsibility as well. Because, you know, for, for years, I just what was going back and forth to the doctors. Um, you, you know, basically giving my power away. But it's definitely, it's a must to address that. Even if it's one problem, you need to address it with your diet. Or at least speak to somebody mm -hmm. that knows talking about yeah that's been there and done it sure yeah. and taking personal responsibility is, is is i think that's something that is probably in terms of mindset and turning it around um at the top of the list because <clears throat> if someone has symptoms and they know that they need to make changes the first step i think is to take personal responsibility like so i would say to myself I got myself into this mess. Not like I'm allergic to things yeah. or this did this to me or whatever, right? No, I did this or yeah. I did this. Yeah. And it's the, the combination of doing all those things that create all these symptoms that cause the illness. And when we're talking about the eczema thing, right? So when people have this eczema, they go to the doctor and they get some cortisone and they're putting it out on the outside. But that's not the root problem. It's coming from the inside. Yeah. Right? The inner first, and then the outer will just bloom. Right. That's why they call it elimination, because it pushes, yeah. it could put the nutrition on the inside and push all the bad stuff out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. When you think, you know, when you look at all the beauty products and stuff, Dom, just, just as a, an example here. When you look at all the beauty products and that, they're being pushed out there, do you know what I mean? And you've got people like putting all the makeup on and putting all the creams on and the Botox and everything else. And you're like, but, you know, that's toxins. You're putting all that on. You're piling it on, piling it on. Right. And that's just going to make it 100 times worse. But, you know, they're, they're looking beautiful on the outside, but on the inside, they look like a dead weed. Exactly. Yeah. And they get those things get absorbed and people think, well, and then they're, what they're doing is they're covering up things that are coming from the outside. And it's, mad, it's madness. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it is crazy. It is pure insanity. It is. Yeah, it's, it's just sort of like inverted. It's, it's, it's crazy. It is. We're living in a crazy, crazy world. But you know the society that we uh, live in—that it, 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 it hasn't helped. Mm -hmm. We're 
live in it in a, a way we people aren't taking personal responsibility for themselves yeah. you know and that needs to be addressed it does it's such a big mountain to climb but there's the good news is that we can we have the opportunity to do something about it and what you're doing is bringing awareness yeah. to this whole topic mm -hmm. of nutrition and taking responsibility which i think is the yeah. first step you know yeah. and people getting people to, to to hear it and to listen to it is always the challenge yeah it is. you know what's that the old saying we're, we're talking speaking talking to deaf ears <laughs> like la 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 yeah but i mean <laughs> oh, we've yeah, all been there and end up drinking the wine and just say oh it'll never happen to me right invincibility yeah ignorance <laughs> bliss as they say <laughs> I'm a superhero. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm invincible. Yeah, Captain Invincible. Yeah. But some point down the line, they need, they're going to end up getting sick. It, it catches up. It always does. You can't run from the consequences of, of whatever behavior, eating, drinking. Okay. It all has a consequence. You know, and, and I had a good friend. I have a good friend. I haven't talked to him for a couple of years. And we used to play tennis all the time. And he um, used to say the body is a chemical reaction. And he said something like every second there are six trillion chemical reactions happening at the in the body. Every every second, like yeah. six trillion all the like all the yeah. time. I was just like, what? Six trillion. So even though know, if you drink water, that's gonna have an effect. If you drink yeah. orange juice, that's going to have an effect. If you drink petroleum, that's going to have an effect, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, so it doesn't really matter what you're putting in the body. It's going to have an effect. And if you keep putting, you know, the bad stuff in, it's going to, yeah, it messes things up. It does. Basically, the, the human body is like an ecosystem. So, you know, if you don't look after it properly, it's going to just die yeah yeah I'm gonna die. well we're yeah i mean we're all dying right yeah <laughs> that's that's inevitable slow death and we can slow we can slow down the death and we can slow down the misery quite a bit by being educated being willing to listen being willing to be open and and hear differently hear new information let it in yeah 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 I mean, it's yeah, it's really important. Um, I mean, I don't want to like to go down sort of. Um, I'm a vegan, and you know, you're bad because you're eating meat or anything like that. It's not about that, or you know, where vegetarian versus vegan or a meat eater or anything like that. It's not about that. It's about um, taking, looking after your body, um, whether you, whether you're a meat eater or whatever, whatever you are, whatever you want to do with your with you with your with yourself but it is looking after your body and start um taking care and taking personal responsibility as well yeah i mean there's so much we can do as well when you, for cleaning the body up um and if you just do it bit by bit you don't have to do all of a sudden like drastic measures overnight because these viruses are, are very cunning little things they um you know, like if you get a craving for something, a certain type of food, that's actually not you, but it's actually the viruses saying like, feed me. Really? Yes. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. 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 And we then, yeah. So what happens is then we get away from being choice making humans because it's not us making that request for whatever craving it's the yeah is, right this is, is, I, I told you when i went about this whole functional medicine the, the doctor that i went to she she says we you have to get yourself back to a place where you understand the consequences of the choices that you're making and I, that makes perfect sense so you she said let's do the elimination thing it's going to take a while it's going to take probably a month at least yeah. to get back to a baseline and then you can begin to reintroduce foods to the system and then see how it feels. Then you can say, okay, 
I can choose now between this and this, and it's in that choice that empowers us. Yeah. So, I mean, what you're doing is really astonishing. Thank you, Dominic. People, so many people just need to hear it. It's been so, it's so worth it. Yeah. And yeah, I think that, you know, just if you've done it yourself and you, you're continuing to do it, you obviously know what works for you and what doesn't. So for someone may not be so sensitive to eating uh, a piece of, I mean, so let's say some fish, okay, whatever. that That is considered to be meat, right? But they may not be as sensitive. Or like my aunt, uh, she was very sensitive to garlic for some reason. I don't know why. But people can then come to a place where they're at choice yeah. instead of being a victim to, you know, the consequences of the advertisers that say, this is good for you. Yeah. You know, because there's so a lot of misinformation out there about nutrition, isn't there? There is, Dominic. There is. It's like, don't look over here. Look over here over there sort of thing yeah yeah a lot of people are getting really really um having the wool pull over the eyes shall we say mm -hmm. yeah and it's and it's bad it's bad we i mean we got to the point now where we're at a crossroads dominic in our society you know we've got the pharmaceutical industries you know we've got the big um food giants as well you know, they don't. They do not like change. Unfortunately, they don't like people to do um, empower themselves and take care of themselves. They don't want people to do that. They want people to rely on the system because yeah. it's a money making game. At the end of the day, um, people. Some people might disagree with me, but my personal um, opinion is that. Big Pharma, they're all about money. They don't care about people. They care about profit. And they always have done. Um, so. It's yeah, that's a whole another big topic there. Yeah, that's. Yeah. And I mean, I think that in the in the big picture, there's probably, you know, things that the far, Big Pharma does that, you know, they, they are like the, the, the whole vaccine for corona right now right so they they're doing that right not all of them but there's some of, and that's that's a whole nother topic at the same time however for the masses in terms of getting this thing under control they they've they figured that out so that's that's like goes on the plus side right now wouldn't that or no uh-oh vaccines here we go i'm gonna yeah. be <laughs> down that subject <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that's such a hot topic very yeah. it's such a hot topic we live in an insane world you're right because the, yeah they're full of toxins that's all i'm gonna say I'm yeah gonna say well you know the scary part about that and yeah. i think we should we should we're at 43 minutes i think that we should we should close after this little thing but like i've got friends two friends all right that have contacted uh Corona, and one of them was in a hospital for a month, mm -hmm. and it's so like wow. And he can still he's he can can get it up and move around now, but he's in his late sixties. Another good friend of mine, same age as me, he's yeah. been in day like day thirty one. He said as of this morning, and he says he's so tired, he has no energy, he can barely breathe, you know all this stuff. So my thing is like oh. I don't want to put myself in that position situation. So I might as well just, you know, get the shot so I can avoid that. So that that's gotta be the conversation going on in people's brains, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. They're being they're they're being feared. I think the media's not helping either Dominic as well. So that's not helping at all. Um, you know, and pressure peer pressure as well, again from you know, well, if, if we all get in it, I'm going to get it sort of thing. Or why aren't you getting it sort of thing? But if you've got a strong immune system, you'll be fine. You know, do you know what? I'll just quickly tell you something, Dominic. Not last year, but the year before when the coronavirus first came out, I actually got it. And for two weeks, you know, I, I, was, I was poorly, but I... I was fine after two weeks. 
Mm -hmm. For me, with an autoimmune condition as well, I've been dealing with the autoimmune conditions. And, uh, and I you know, and I survived it and I got over it basically and it, because, and the reason why I got over it quickly was because I've been doing all the, the preparation work, I suppose, mm -hmm. of my immune system back up again from ground zero and then sort of doing it bit by bit. And you know, right. with all the medicinal and healing herbs I've been taking, like the cat's claw, been taking plenty of zinc vitamin C, you know, vitamin D. These are really important things that people should be doing every single day. Mm -hmm. Not when they get a, a cold or a flu virus or something like that. They should be doing every single day. Lots of vitamin C, lots of garlic, um, vitamin D, zinc, hydro zinc. So all these, I mean, they, these are just small things mm -hmm. that are doing every single day anyway um, to build the immune system up. Right. So if you've got a strong immune system, you'll battle anything. Yeah, I think that that is, I, you know, I can attest that that's true because the, if we leave the body alone in terms of, you know, putting junk into it, right, it has a this innate, amazing ability to heal itself and to create a very strong, what's, I mean, immune system. But the immune system is the, uh, like the, the Star Wars, the force. Yeah. That prevents things from getting inside and when a little thing gets inside then it can say no 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 and then yeah yeah, yeah. interesting yeah but it's yeah I could say it's it's important to um build the immune system yeah wow yeah. This, this could go on we could just go on forever <laughs> Oh, you're amazing. You are yeah. so amazing. Awesome. Uh, just, well, just one, just one thing, just a top sure. tip for anybody that's got anxiety, okay? Um, there's a, herb, a medicinal healing herb that is called lemon balm. And you can get it in either a tincture from, uh, which is called Vimagy. That's the brand, Vimagy. And you can get it off um, online. And you can take that for anxiety relief. But also you can get uh, lemon balm tea as well, uh, and you can just make make that in a tea. Um, mm -hmm. But before before I end this as well, um, if you're going to ch if anybody's going to change their diet or anything like that, or do any um, you know take any medication or anything supplements or anything, I am not a doctor. I'm not a you know a professional doctor or consultant or anything like that. You need to seek medical intervention with your doctor before you do any changes with your diet yeah uh, or, or even if you take medicinal herbs or anything else i mentioned i just want to just make that point dominic as a disclaimer um, for i understand people. and that's very smart i'm glad that you said that because yeah i mean the legalities behind it are just yeah yeah, so, yeah. yeah. but you know it, 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 just having a conversation with someone like you that has the knowledge the personal experience and I think is the most important part because you, you, you can talk from that experience. People can always choose to do what they are going to choose to do, right? Yeah. And um, so, yeah, go to see your doctor first, of course, and then, you know, decide from there. I mean, I went to go see a licensed physician also. She happened to be a functional medicine doctor. Yeah. That's what got me back on my path five months ago. But we all go off the wagon. It's not like we're bad people. And we, we all, you know, I mean, unless like now you're on your wagon because you know exactly. And this is why I think the longevity of it really makes the big difference. So you could live to be, a, you know, two or 300 years old. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, with everybody. Oh, what was that movie where the, the guy had the sword? He was like, there can be only one. And he oh, was a Scottish oh. dude. Oh. What was that? I'm trying to think. You remember that movie? It was like 20, maybe more than that, years ago. Um, there can be only one. And they, they lived, they were immortal. I can't think what it is. You know what I'm yeah. talking about, though, right? We'll have to leave that for the next conversation that we have, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> we have homework. <laughs> the listeners, you know, they might be able to uh, tell us 
where that film has come from, maybe. Yeah, well, we have uh, Susanna was on. I don't, I, I don't know if you you know Susanna. No, I don't. She made a comment a while back. She said, "Yay, we're talking about nutrition." She's she's uh, she's all into health, and she's actually does movements. She's a Qigong. Um, oh my God. Yeah, so she had a bad accident, and that kind of like changed her whole lifestyle and she got herself back on track and now yeah she's she's teaching qigong and several other different types of, of movement she's part of the uh, the health and fitness uh group here on in the self achievement network oh amazing they're connecting with that there can be only one yeah so this is uh i'm going to have to watch that movie again i got to find out what it is <laughs> i'll i'll send you a message on messenger chats and then you can <laughs> well anyway jane thank you so much oh, it's, been it's been lovely dominic thanks so where are we going to pick up um uh we schedule self yourself again for another talk yeah. and yeah we'll schedule it for another talk. yeah okay we'll just keep it rolling thank you yeah it's been lovely thank you dominic You're and, very welcome and thank you for yeah. listening all right, we'll get there. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. We'll get this posted out and um, have everybody watch it. And if they want to contact you, they just click on the little thing that says Jane Moore and they can yeah. send you a message if they have any questions. Yeah, they can do. Okay. All right. Excellent. Thanks. Right. Bye, Dom. Enjoy your weekend. Mm -hmm. Bye bye for now.